Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about unit conversions and the metric system. So first let's talk about some more familiar units in what we call the English or the British system. Um, we're about the only place in the world that uses these units. There's a couple others, but otherwise everybody else is on metric. Uh, it'll probably never change because we're so accustomed to these units. But, um, you know, if, if you take kind of an honest look at them, it's, you got to wonder where some of these conversions came from, you know. And we're just used to them now, but there doesn't seem to be a huge rhyme or reason. And there's probably a good explanation for all of them, but the metric system you'll see is all based on powers of 10. So it's really easier to follow. We just don't have the comfort level with it here in this country. So there's three main, you know, disciplines we're going to talk about. Length. Okay, mass or weight. And in physics class, I would be on your case for the difference between mass and weight, but right now it's not important. Okay, so let's talk about weight. I'm going to flash a, a book here to, to spare some of the writing. I don't know what conversions you're going to be responsible for memorizing. Okay, that's a good question, but I don't have the answer to it. I think you'd probably be given most of those factors. Okay, then we know most of these on this first page. There's 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, 36 inches in a yard, 5,280 feet in a mile. So obviously units of length. Mass or weight. There's 16 ounces in a pound, 2,000 pounds in a ton. Okay, volume. There's all kinds of volume we use. In the kitchen, you know, we have teaspoons and tablespoons. There's three teaspoons and one tablespoon. Eight ounces in a cup. we got to be careful about ounces because ounces uh, could be thought of as weight or mass ounces or in this case, fluid ounces when we're talking about volume. So they really should stick the qualifier of fluid ounces in there. Okay, with eight ounces in a cup, two cups in a pint, two pints in a quart, uh, two tablespoons, in an ounce, four cups in a quart, four quarts in a gallon. Okay, lots of things to remember there, you know. All of these things can be thought of as a unit ratio, okay, a fraction, a ratio. 12 inches per foot, one foot per 12 inches. Let me, let me drive this point home here. We know that there are 12 inches and one foot. We know those things to be identical, right? Oops. 12 inches equals a foot. I mean, who's going to argue that? We've been, we've been doing that our whole lives. Okay, but if I write it as a fraction, 12 inches divided by 1 foot, and I ask you what's the value of that fraction, you might tell me 12. Right? Because 12 divided by 1 is 12, but that's not correct. The value of that fraction is 1. It's 1. Because these units don't match. The numbers are only part of the story. Yeah, the number is 12. 12 divided by 1 is 12. But it's 12 inches per foot. The units do not cancel. I must have a common unit, and then the units will cancel. Okay? We all know 1 foot is really 12 inches. So I'm to, what I'm asking myself is, what is 12 inches divided by 12 inches? And now you don't have an argument with me that it's a 1. Okay, so we got to get comfortable knowing that that's a 1. Okay, that's called a unit ratio. 12 inches over a foot, I could write it the other way. 1 foot over 12 inches. Again, it has a value of 1, but it doesn't look like a 1. It looks like the fraction 1 12th to me, right? And the numerical part is 1 12th, but I must consider the units also. Okay? So if I wanted to do a conversion, uh, 30... Uh, let's see, three feet. Three feet equals, you know, how many inches? Okay, I don't know. we got to figure it out here. Okay, we know this one. It's obvious, right? There's 12 inches and a foot. So, three feet is going to be 36 inches. Okay, we just know it. But what we really need to do to calculate it is we need to do the following. We need to say, okay, three feet... You know, so we're going to write the answer there. So many inches. Three feet, I'm going to call that a fraction over one. And then I'm going to multiply by one of these unit ratios that I just wrote down here. i got to, I got to decide which one I want here. I want feet to disappear. 
and I want inches to magically appear, right? So if I choose this one, 12 inches divided by one foot, look what happens to my units. My feet cancel, just like reducing fraction. A foot on the top and a foot on the bottom are gone, and the only unit left on the board is inches. 3 times 12 is 36. The only unit left on the board is inches 36. Okay? If I chose incorrectly, the units would hopefully identify that problem for me. What if I did this one? 3 feet times 1 foot per 12 inches. Well, now I'm going to get 3 square feet on the top over 12 inches on the bottom. That looks horrendous. Okay, that, that can't be what I want. I wanted to convert feet to inches, and then I got square feet per inches. Okay, now I, I don't like that one. Okay? So, choose your conversions so that the units work out the way you want them to work out. Okay? That's going to be the best way to do it. Okay, so if you know these unit conversions, that's like the, the, our easiest bet. Okay? Now, it is true, I mean, we can't do this on the exam, but it is true in life, we can just pull out the magic box and ask the magic box a question. And I do that a lot, I've noticed. Okay, here's my magic box. Let's ask the magic box a question. Convert feet to inches. One foot is equal to 12 inches. Okay, I'll buy that. One foot equals 12 inches. Let's do it the other way. Convert inches to feet. One inch is equal to 0 0.0833 feet. Whoa, what the hell is that? Whoa, baby. It said one inch. No, it said one foot equals 12 inches. I, I, I get that one. But now it said one inch equals 0 0.0833 feet. Well, what the hell is that? Okay, we didn't see that a minute ago in our what we just did over here, right? I, I didn't have that. I only had the number 12 on the board. I didn't have 0 .0833. Where did that come from? Well, you know where that comes from. It's the fraction, 1 12th. That's 0 .0833. Take 1 divided by 12. You've got to round it off. It's a repeating decimal. That's where that comes from. It's the fraction 1 12th. And we did see 1 12th, right? That was, in this, correct, in this case, the incorrect choice. But if I asked the question a little differently, if I said, let's convert 24 inches into feet, okay? Well, now I need to choose that one. 1 foot divided by 12 inches. Inches cancel. So it's 24 over 12 feet, and 24 over 12 we know is just 2 feet. Okay? But the magic box doesn't show me it, show it that way. The magic box says, I don't know if you can see it with the glare. Let me turn this light off. Turn off light. The magic box didn't give me that. The magic box just said, I gotta, I gotta multiply by this number here. Let's see if it works here. I gotta take 24 inches and then I gotta multiply by this goofy number, 0 0.0833, and supposedly that'll give me feet. And you'll see it does. Now we've rounded it off, so we might it won't be exact. 24 times 0 0.0833. I got 1.9992. Okay, 1.9992. I should have got a two, right? So it's close, it's right there. Let's just round it up. Okay, so conversion factors, though, there's nothing wrong with them, okay? But sometimes it's a rounded off decimal, okay? And then we'll, we'll get little discrepancies like that. But who's going to remember this? 0 0.0833, you know, rounded off, repeating. Who's going to remember that? Nobody. But everybody knows 12 inches equals 1 foot. So all you have to do is remember that. And then you just have to decide how to apply it. It might be 12 inches on top and 1 foot on the bottom, or it might be 1 foot on the top and 12 inches on the bottom. Depends on how the question is asked. Okay, then you don't have to worry about the old magic box. Throw him in the garbage. What would we do without him, though, right? All right, he's a lifesaver. I'll tell you, that magic box. All right, let's do a couple more. Let's convert... Uh, I don't know. 
let's do let's do I don't know what should we do let's do pints to gallons let's say I have 24 pints and I want to convert that to gallons and I don't have a direct conversion in my mind from pints to gallons, right? And even if we even if we had a cheat sheet that we could go back to, which you probably won't on the exam, there's no pints to gallons there, right? I got pints to quarts, and then I've got quarts to gallons. There's two pints in a quart and four quarts in a gallon. So let me write that information down. Two pints per one quart. Four quarts per one gallon. Okay, now how can I use this information to my advantage here? I've got 24 pints. I'll give it a denominator. I'm going to think about it here for a minute. I want those pints to disappear, and I want the quarts to appear. So this is my conversion. I'm going to flip it upside down. So I'm going to say one quart over two pints. Okay, how did I know how to do that? Because I want the pints to disappear and I want quarts to be left. And now I've got that. Okay, now I want to do it again and I want gallons to be left because I'm converting. My problem was convert pints into gallons here, right? So now i got to do it again with this one. I'm going to flip it over. Instead of four over one, I'm going to say one gallon over four quarts. Quarts cancel. The only unit left on the board is a gallon. Okay, so I've got it. So I've got to take 24, you know, it's 24 gallons divided by 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so when I do that, of course, I get 3 gallons. Right, that's how we do these conversions. Understand the conversion factor. It's a unit ratio. You can flip it over. It has a value of 1. It doesn't look like a 1 because the numerical part isn't a 1. But when you factor in the units, it is a 1. Okay? Converting between units doesn't change the value. It just changes the way you're reporting that value. No different than saying I've got 100 pennies or I say I have $1. I mean, 100 is a lot different than 1. But 100 pennies and $1, of course, we know that's the same. Okay, same idea here. Okay, let's do one more involving uh, a couple of conversions just, uh, just to nail it. And I didn't necessarily show any conversions for this one, but I think we will, uh, I think we'll have it here. Let's talk, let's say I've got 50 miles, I'm traveling now, a rate, 50 miles per hour. And I want to turn that into uh, feet per second. Okay? I want to turn that into feet per second. So I got to change the miles into feet and the hours into seconds. Oh baby, we can do it. Uh, 50 miles per hour. Sorry about that noise. Uh, not now. It's, uh, what is it, 10 o'clock um, on a spring break night here. Alright, 50 miles per hour. I need to change the miles to feet. Now, maybe you remember the conversion and maybe you don't. It's 5,280 feet in one mile. Okay, now I might have to flip that over and say one mile equals 5,280 feet. i got to think about it. How do I know? I want the miles to disappear and I want the feet to show up. So i got to put the feet up here, 5,280 feet over one mile. Okay, so now miles are going to be gone, and if I left it as it is now, I'm going to have feet per hour. Okay, I'm, but I don't want feet per hour. I want to know how many feet per second. So I got to do another conversion here. I got to go from hours to seconds. Now maybe I don't know how many seconds are in an hour. Okay, but we did this with the little universe thing. We know there are uh, 60 uh, minutes per one hour. And we know there's 60 seconds per one minute. So I'm just going to work my way up and think about it. I want the hours to disappear and the minutes to appear. So uh, 60, uh, excuse me, I did that wrong. I want one hour on top, 60 minutes on the bottom. 
So hours disappear. And now I'm going to have feet per minute if I leave it the way it is. But I want feet per second. So now I'm going to do it this way. 60 minutes. Um, and I did it wrong again. I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm sorry. One minute over 60 seconds. Okay. I'm catching myself in mistakes. And the way I'm doing it is I'm looking at these conversions and I'm looking at the units. I need the minutes to cancel. And the only way that's going to work is with that minutes on top and that minutes on the bottom. Um, and I started writing the minutes per hour and it wasn't going to make sense to me. I want, I want feet per second. So that's why I did it that way. Okay. The only unit left on the board here is the unit of feet per second. So I'm going to have it here. I got to take 50 times 5,280, but then these both are in the denominator. I got to divide by 60 and then divide by 60 one more time. So let me do that. So 50, 50 times 5,280 divided by 60 and divided by 60 one more time. Ah, look at that. Divided by 60. And divided by 60 one more time. I can see it on my computer. I can't see it hovering over me here. So what do we get there? 73.3. Round it off. Feet per second. Okay. Hey, I got an idea. Check this out. Check this out. Let's ask the magic box. Convert 50 miles per hour to feet per second. 50 miles per hour is yeah. equal to 73.333 feet per second. Damn, we got it. Look at that. Woohoo! I love you, magic box. Oh, you wouldn't believe. I, I'm not going to even tell you, but now that I said that, how can I not? My kids, high school. There's an app called PhotoMath. I'm not even going to show you. But I'm showing you. This thing, it, it sickens me as a teacher. But let me show you what it can do. I don't have a real complicated textbook here. But this thing, you can take a calculus textbook. Take a picture of an equation, and it spits you back the answer in the blink of an eye. This thing is crazy. I don't have anything with me like that. But I can just pull up some little linear equation or something that we've been doing. Uh, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Come on, give me an equation. Okay. And like I said, I was putting calculus stuff in here, and it was amazing me that it had the answer spit right back out at me. Oh, well. Okay. There we go. Here's a, here's a semi-complicated linear problem, right, from a different book I've got here. This one here. Okay, we talked about that clearing the fraction technique there. Solve this problem right here. Okay, the answer is, the answer is 108 divided by 5, right? Okay. This PhotoMath app, watch this. See if I can... Let you see me doing this. How can I do this? How can I do this? How can I let you see me do this? I have to get it just right in the camera lens. And I'm holding my book and holding the camera. Wait a minute, there it is. Oh, come on, man. Work with, work with me, work with me. Mm -mm -mm. Please have patience. I'll get it. i got to hold the book out there so you can see it. I can see it. Okay, there it is. I've got to get it in there good. I hit my, you know, photograph button. Hopefully I caught it. Um, okay, no, I didn't catch it. My bad. I got that E in there from solve. I think I got it that time. 108 divided by 5. What did I say the answer is? 108 divided by 5. Isn't that sickening? You can do very complicated problems uh, while you, the computer, the magic box, the phone, photo math it's called. Free download on my phone anyway. So anyway, it's, it's neat for me to watch you do things, but boy, does that really uh, 
not allow the student to learn when the kill when the phone does ev absolutely everything for you. It's kind of staggering. Okay. Well, we didn't get to metric system, did we? We did some unit conversions, but that's okay. It's we're at the 20-minute mark. We'll do metric on the next video.